It's Kim here and I've got a layout for you using Minte Seaside Escape. I have used a single sheet of a uniquely creative collection as well. It's a paper from Seize the Day because I felt that I just needed to bring in something a little bit different um, with this range which is very very blue. So I'm cutting down a piece here which is about six by six and I'm going to use this as the base for my photos as well as to create my clusters on of embellishments. Just trimming off the selvage strip there. So you can see that this um, Seaside Escape collection um, is very blue. So by adding in just a little bit of this green and blue and white check or played, um, it is breaking up that color a little bit by bringing in more of the green, which is the same color actually as the green in the leaves of the Minto collection, which was great. So um, I am creating that center panel. And as I said, I will then be adding a strip of photos and my various embellishments. Just was finding my edge distressor there. So I'm just distressing the edge of each of the papers lightly. Um, you could use a pair of scissors for this too if you don't have an edge distressor. There's a few different types of edge distressor tools available. This one um, is a Heidi Swap one that I have had for quite a number of years. So I'm just using my wet glue, which um, I use a, um, oh, now I can't remember what the name of that is, of course, even though I use it all the time, but I will put it in the notes to this, or I will mention it again in um, a minute when it comes to me, which it will do. Uh, so yes, a wet glue adhesive. Um, and I'm going to, oh, I'm also going to distress the outside of this. Oh, I wasn't happy with the distressing in um, the corner there. So I've got a number of the pieces from the die cuts that come with this, which they're really nice die cuts. So they're laser cut and they're very close to the edge of the printed design. So in that case, flowers um, and there was a beach heart um, and a wheel there and they are very um, precisely cut, so they're very detailed um, and they're definitely worth getting um, because you don't have to fussy cut anything and they cut even more precisely than anything that you could fussy cut yourself or certainly anything more than I could fussy cut myself. So you can see there I'm going to create a strip of the photos and then I've got the cluster of flowers on the left and I'm creating a cluster of various seaside elements on the right. The title is a Minte Chipboard Word Memories that is also available um, in, um, so I got all of this paper and the embellishments from uh, Embellish It. This is not actually a DT layout for Embellish It, but the products I purchased from there, along with that Minte Word, um, the memories, and then by the sea are words from the die cuts, uh, the laser cut die cuts as well. And I've got some more flowers here and I'm just looking to see where I'm going to put them and I'm going to pop them up beside the photos. So you can see now that the basis of the layout has come together, but it is quite um, busy in that background. And so I'm, I have a few strategies that I'll share with you in this layout to try and um, separate that um, box that I'm or the six by six square that I've got the photos on away from that floral background paper and I, I do absolutely love that floral background paper because it is so pretty but it makes the layout very busy. So I've got um, Unicorn Hair um, Prima Sparks acrylic paint here so it's like a goldy colour and I'm just painting that memories word. Decided not to waste the paint and got a bit of old book paper so I just get the gold um, leftover paint goes onto that and I actually use that book paper in my collage art um, because then you've got words with little bits of gold paint on it and it looks really nice. Um, so yeah, rather than putting it onto my glass mat, um, my Tim Holtz glass mat mixed media sheet um, or just, you know, and then just wiping it away by putting it onto the book paper, it, it jazzes up my book paper a bit for some collage work. 
So that's dry now. So this is the first technique I've employed to try and separate away this um, paper from the background. I am going to put multi layers of white tissue paper um, behind it. So the first thing I'm doing is cutting um, a rat. So to leave a bit of the tissue paper border sticking out from this edge of this piece. And then what I'm going to do is separate. So I've got three um, layers of tissue paper here and you'll see that I'm going to separate each piece while well, I'm just straightening up this side because yeah cutting straight is not my strong point um, so I'm, I've got the three pieces there so that they're not directly lined up and then I decided that I would crumple them up to give them a bit more texture and I, then I will lay the three pieces and adhere, adhere them together and adhere that six by six square on top of them and that means that the squares don't line up exactly anymore because they're crumpled and um, I've separated them. And so there's some added texture around the edge as um, some of the layers are over other tissue paper and then some of them are single layers um, due to that not being lined up properly. So it just gives a little bit more interest around the outside of that paper block and I am mounting the paper block onto the tissue paper using a craft foam. So this is craft Kitty's craft foam which is adhesive on one side um, and the other side uh, you can either use double-sided tape or a uh, wet adhesive to glue it down and I've decided it's still not coming like standing out from the paper enough. So now I'm just going to add some heavy white gesso. I'm just using a palette knife there. I'm using heavy white gesso just to tone down that uh, floral paper a bit around the edge of that block so it stands out a bit more. Um, you could use white acrylic paint or normal gesso. I just use the block of paper to line it up and make sure that I've got just a bit showing that will show all the way around that when it's adhered down. Okay, so you can see that it's just softened the pattern that will sit directly behind the block, just so that that block stands out and um, away from that background paper a bit more. I'm just using a double-sided tape here and then sticking it down. Um, I did make sure that that paint had dried. Um, I just cut that out of the video because you didn't need to see it. And you can see now that center block stands out a lot more than what it did before I um, used that paint and tissue paper. So that's just a couple of techniques to help you if you find that um, one pattern paper is not standing out enough from another pattern paper. So now I'm just going to mount my photos on white cardstock. I wouldn't necessarily always do this, but um, the white that was around the photos when I printed them, for whatever reason, just wasn't... I wanted it a bit wider um, and I had... Um, by cutting them apart, I'd cut it down a bit too far. So I wanted to make sure I had a nice even white border around them. So I've just stuck them onto some white cardstock and then trimmed it down to end up with an even white border um, around the edge of those photos and they will be um, in a photo strip. I'm also going to put some uh, foam tape behind um, the photo strip and the flower elements so that they pop up off a bit off the background. So by mounting the photos onto white cardstock, it made it easier to get those even um, and to be in a nice straight um, line strip um, with the photos. So you can see there I'm adding some more foam to the to the back of those flowers so that everything will just stand up off that background and they'll all be at the same level. Um, so some wet adhesive um, on that photo strip um, and that little cluster of flowers up the top there. And now I'm just relaying all the items back, deciding whether they need to have foam added to them. So the beach hut's getting some foam added to it. I am gluing down the ship's wheel directly onto that background piece, but the hut's being popped up a bit. Um, and then I have an anchor. Oh no, I'm going to add a little bit of foam tape to the seagull, which goes up 
in the top right hand corner of that six by six square so just adding a bit of so i've got some strips of white double-sided foam um, tape so they're thin strips so it's quite good for adding smaller items so i'm sticking the seagull down and i'm using that to also stick down the um, anchor now all of those pieces are from those die die cut packs and i'm just using a little bit of that white um, foam tape to help hold up the bottom edge of the word now i don't have to have it all over this chipboard word because part of the chipboard word so the top part of the chipboard word will sit on the photos and i'll just use a wet glue to attach it there um, but part of the world word will sit off the photo so i'm just using a little bit of foam tape so that the word sits flat um, and now that's going to just be popped across the bottom edge of the photo um, it comes slightly over onto the flowers and slightly onto the beach hut but because they're both po popped up with foam it's all at the same level i'm just using little bits of foam double-sided foam tape to put some behind um, the other die cut words so by the sea and i will pop them up underneath the memories so the full title will be memories by the sea and these are photos of my two beautiful nieces and their parents away on holidays in portugal um, so they live in europe so they haven't traveled all the way from new zealand they live in europe um, and they went on summer holiday in portugal which they thoroughly enjoyed um, so this was some photos of them there so memories by the sea was very appropriate and this range was perfect for it um, okay so they're all stuck down and and the glue i can remember now is art glitter glue um and i use a fine tip applicator on that as well um if you want that glue it is available at embellish it um, and I do really like it. If I want a stronger glue, I use um, a Stampera Extra Strong Glue. But for my everyday glue use, I use this Art Glitter Glue. Um, I just wanted to move those flowers that are on the right side of the photo down a bit. Um, and because it, the glue hadn't fully dried, I was able to get it up and move that down a bit. You'll see that I fuss with it yet again before this layout's finished. Um, these, this is just a phrase from some Tim Holtz Tiny Words. Um, and I have popped that below the title and I've got I've decided I want to add a little bit more a, a few more die cuts to this so that's um, I'm looking at um, the lighthouse which I then decided I uh, fitted well on the left side of the photo and above the flowers and I really like it there it brings that you can see now I've got the red with the lighthouse the beach house and the sub part of the title and I think that works really well around the photo cluster. So you can see that red sort of move right around the bottom part of the, the photos and the sides. And then I added some bollards and I'm adding a little boat here as well. So I think all of those elements work really well together. Um, I'm popping that boat up with a little bit of foam tape too. Um, the lighthouse I just stuck down flat so it sits behind the flowers. And now that is all done. I actually journaled on the back of this layout because it, there wasn't really anywhere on the front where it would show up. Um, so I did put all the journaling on the back of this. And there you go, I fussed again, move those flowers down a little bit more. Um, and that layout is done. There's some close up shots coming up. I apologize for the fact it's been so long since I have put up a video, but I will try and be more regular. Life has got very busy lately. I hope you enjoyed this and um, please, if you did, I would appreciate you hitting like. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. Um, and if you leave a comment, I will reply to you. Thank you and goodbye for now.